Hi, it's Dwyer. It's Friday, March 19th, 2021. It's a Friday morning. Let's talk cryptocurrency. By the way, you can check out my sites, digitalassetlife.blogspot.com, as well as richarddwyer.co. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, it's my thesis here, as subscribers here know, that there are really two different markets in cryptocurrency. There's Bitcoin, which is a store of wealth, which is, in my opinion, the best investment you can make right now. Right, there's Bitcoin, and then there's everything else. Right? You don't want to confuse Ethereum with Bitcoin. Full disclosure, I own both. I'm speculating in Ethereum. But understand, Bitcoin has no competition. Let me disagree with Mark Cuban here. And I encourage people to look up the billionaire's take on which is a better store of value, Bitcoin or Ethereum. My point to you is that Bitcoin is a finished product. Bitcoin has no competition. There's a reason why companies like MicroStrategy, Tesla, Square, and Marathon Digital are investing in Bitcoin above and beyond the other coins. It's because Bitcoin is digital gold. There's a finite amount that will ever be minted and we know that today. There's not a discussion, there's not speculation, there's not some vote that's taken place and then you're hoping that a deflationary protocol is properly put in place in the future. There also isn't any other platform that is coming up with a way to compete with Bitcoin, right? Bitcoin is just a store of value. It has a huge head start on everything else. Its network is unparalleled. The number of people using it, its market cap, its hash rate, they're unparalleled. This is a profoundly different market than Ethereum. Understand too, Ethereum faces stiff competition from not just the players you know, not just Polkadot and other governance coins, Cardano, uh, Cosmos, but they also have competition from what you don't know the Zendu sidechain protocol from underreported Horizon, for example. Right now, smart contracts are glossy. They feel new. This is the beginning of a revolution. Well, soon they're going to become commonplace. Commonplace on many different chains and parachains. They're going to be all over the place. Also, some of the other ideas being bandied about for Ethereum 2.0, like sharding, that's going to be much more commonplace. You already have sharding on several coins, including Zilliqua right now. The purpose of Ethereum is really different from Bitcoin's purpose. Most of the people holding Bitcoin, take the people at MicroStrategy, they don't plan to use Bitcoin as a means of exchange. They aren't going to trade you Bitcoin for goods and services. They aren't particularly obsessed with how fast the transaction goes. You have all of those concerns in the Ethereum world. All of them. Let me tell you too. I was uh, 
using MetaMask to do a transaction the other day, and I was shocked at the price they wanted to charge me to do the transaction. Right? The transaction costs of Ethereum transactions at times is simply out of control. Right? You wonder when the market's going to wake up to the fact that with Dash and other coins, you can do much cheaper transactions, much faster. Pivx, right? Much cheaper transactions, much faster. Also, developers need to understand that the Zendu protocol that I mentioned earlier, as well as other protocols, are very developer friendly. Sooner or later, developers are going to understand hey, I'm going to develop here on Cardano. I'm not going to develop on Ethereum. Let me say this too. You know, you have other developments coming down the pike. I was on a gambling site the other day. And uh, to my surprise, they had an announcement on the website that they were now accepting Litecoin, right? Litecoin, of course, is about to go private. Not in an ownership sense, but the coins are incorporating the Mimble Wimble protocol. So you'll be able to use Litecoin confidentially. Now you have some great confidential coins out there on the market. Zcash, for example, Horizon, which I mentioned earlier, Pivx. A uh, pirate coin, right? But none have the market cap right now of Litecoin. When Litecoin adds these privacy protocols, it's going to be a seismic event for crypto. Because we're going to then start talking about the traceability of crypto transactions at a time when some networks are hesitant to have what they call privacy coins, and they include even non-private coins like Dash in that mix. Dash has coin mixing, but nowhere near the level of privacy of, let's say, a horizon. So the consumer, including yours truly, is really just learning about the pros and cons of the different coins out there the means of exchange coins, the governing coins, coins with a high throughput, coins with slow transactions and high fees. We're just being able to compare everything. It's very hard to keep up on what's current. So I believe what people need to do, what you need to consider doing, and I know this is anathema to original crypto thought. When I first got in the space, it was very libertarian, right? The idea was, hey, no one should know about your coins. No one should hold your coins for you. Not your keys, not your coins. You should have your own coins. Everything should be peer to peer. There should be no centralization. But as the market has matured, I believe that you need some centralized entities in your portfolio if you want to maximize your rate of return. I'm not saying to give the keys to everything you own over to third parties, right? That's the old system, isn't it? For those of you who didn't want to hold cash, I'm not saying that at all have some keys to some of your digital assets, right? Have some Bitcoin, have some whatever coin you want in some private place where you have the keys and only you have the knowledge of it, right? Figure out how to do so. Don't have everything on exchanges and stuff like that. But what I'm also saying is that if you want diversification, 
not just with the coins, but with different aspects of the cryptosphere, the crypto universe that are profitable, then you need to go out there and you need to find companies that are highly competent, that are diversified in the financial services that they're offering. For example, let's say you recognize that the mining space right now is very lucrative, right? There are only going to be 21 million Bitcoin made. You understand that you have 900 new Bitcoin every day, and they're being bought out by Grayscale, by PayPal, by others, right? You understand that mining Bitcoin, if you can cap your electricity costs, can be very lucrative. <clears throat> and let's say you've looked at some miners. Riot, blockchain. Hive, HUD-8. Let's say you've looked at all of these. And you thought, wow, you know, this could be lucrative. But... You also want to have money in other areas. Let's say you're on a limited budget. And you're looking at MicroStrategy, Tesla, Square, and Marathon as publicly traded companies where they handle Bitcoin custody for you. But let's say that's not enough. In other words, you want a foot in mining you want a foot in Bitcoin. You want a hand in some altcoins. And you understand <clears throat> that you don't want to just put all of your money in a specialized fund, a trust fund, that only handles one kind of coin. So the Grayscale Bitcoin Fund, that's great, but it's all Bitcoin. They have other funds, but you understand the Filecoin, the Filecoin Fund run by Grayscale is going to be all Filecoin, right? You understand that's the way it is, and you want more diversification than that. Well, what I want you to do right now is to go to galaxydigital.io, Michael Novogratz's his company, right? Understand, Bitcoin went through Bitcoin winter, right? Things are underpriced because of Bitcoin winter, because during Bitcoin winter, Galaxy Digital lost money some quarters, right? Do your research, find out about the company, get it from the horse's mouth at galaxydigital.io. That's their website. Right? Get the stock symbol. Get the over-the-counter symbol that trades here in the United States. Well, let me just point out that Galaxy Digital is at ground zero right now of what's happening in Bitcoin. Google them. You're going to see that they have partnered with numerous people, Morgan Stanley among them. Now, I know this is anathema to a lot in the crypto community. You're trying to move away from Wall Street, not get in bed with Wall Street. Just understand, though, that Wall Street is getting in bed with you. They're moving into the crypto space. Morgan Stanley wants to provide cryptocurrency services for its institutional clients. And of course, they have tapped Galaxy Digital to help them do so. So Galaxy Digital is at that nexus where they are longtime players in the crypto space, including during some unpopular times in crypto. Crypto winter, for example, when they were losing money. Understand, Galaxy Digital 
has been a major holder of Bitcoin. According to some reports, today they own 4,000 Bitcoin. They also own other coins. Recently, Michael Novogratz was online and he asked questions about Cardano. Well, believe it or not, Cardano's head honcho, Charles Hotskinson, then responded and said, hey, call me. Let's talk. In other words, let's just say Galaxy Digital has such a high profile that Michael Novogratz is able to get information about other coins from head honchos like Charles Hoskinson. Understand, I'm a little bit hesitant to add to my Ethereum holdings, right? I also own some Polkadot, I own some Kusuma, I own some Cardano. I don't know who's going to win in the space. I don't view that space as the same as the Bitcoin space. That's a different space. Entirely. Right? Investing in Bitcoin to me is a no-brainer. Store of value, limited supply, wall of institutional money that's going to wash ashore onto the Bitcoin beach. Right? But outside of Bitcoin, you're looking around and you're thinking to yourself, wow, you know, Ethereum had a great head start. Others technologically have caught up and surpassed Ethereum in some areas. Understand, Charles Hoskinson of Cardano, he's one of the people who held, who helped develop Ethereum, as is Gavin Wood of Polkadot and Kusuma, right? The Ethereum alumni have left campus and are building their own empires. So, if you're like me and you want to have some budgetary constraints on what you're doing, outside of Bitcoin, I like the idea of having a group like Galaxy Digital that owns Bitcoin themselves, that owns other cryptos themselves, that's hobnobbing with, at least talking to, the Charles Hoskinsons of the world, as well as Morgan Stanley, in terms of talking up crypto to institutional clients who will have a big presence in the space. Right? People with money want to move into the space. Understand, too, what we're talking about. You're going to learn in the coming years that many pension funds are undervalued. If you're a fireman, if you're a policeman, if you're a teacher, some of your pension fund managers are going to come to you or write to you advise you that some of the money, at least some of the money, is not there. What might happen in the future, and it's going to be a big change in behavior, is people are going to start to save for their retirement by staking cryptocurrency, by investing in cryptocurrency, by lending out cryptocurrency through third parties like BlockFi or Galaxy Digital. Understand, Galaxy Digital is in the Bitcoin mining space. They're in the Bitcoin trust space. They're working with CI Global Asset Management on different vehicles to compete against Grayscale. Understand they're even in the DeFi space where they've teamed up with Parify Capital to invest in DeFi projects. This is a diversified outfit. They're kind of like the Amazon of crypto 
where if you're interested in investing in mining, if you're interested in investing in trust funds, if you're interested in investing in a group who owns some Bitcoin or some Ethereum, if you're interested in investing in a group that is looking at new coins continually, trying to find that new coin that satisfies the need, that has very high upside, that's undervalued but has a chance to go 10x. Hell, this is the cryptocurrency world. 100x. 500x. A company that's going to figure out the differences between Polkadot and its parachains and Ethereum 2.0. A company that understands the value of scarcity in the crypto space. In other words, for that part of your portfolio where you want to be diversified into things that you might not even know about, but that experts in the field know about, and you want to have some of those experts manage that portion of your portfolio, then I believe in crypto, especially given that not all of these cryptos, not even the majority of these cryptos are going to survive long term. Like every market, there's going to be consolidation in this one. Then I think you need to have Galaxy Digital as part of your portfolio. Understand, they're publicly traded. Right? It's anathema to many. They're saying, oh, you're going to give up the keys to some of your crypto to a third party, folks, you don't even have to do that. You can just buy Galaxy Digital on the open market. It's publicly traded, right? As I said earlier, they have an over-the-counter stock here in the United States. I'm not even going to give out the symbol here because what I want people to do is to research the stock. Understand, there are a few things I've learned in life, right? One of them is that you need to think for yourself. You need to do your own research. That's what I want you to do with regard to this company, right? I consider... Many of the names I've mentioned here, I'm invested in some of the names I've mentioned here, like Riot, HUD-8, Neptune Dash, which has been kind to me lately, right? Hive, MicroStrategy, Tesla, Square, Marathon Digital. I consider them to be excellent plays in the crypto community. But if you don't want to just invest and a Bitcoin related play. Right? That's what MicroStrategy is. They've bought up a lot of Bitcoin. They continue to buy a lot of Bitcoin. Right? According to reports, as of today, they have more than $5.3 billion worth of Bitcoin and they're publicly traded. Right, but if you're interested in also getting exposure to Ethereum, Polkadot, Cosmos, Cardano, and let's say it's a little confusing to you, you could use some expert advice. You understand that all of these cryptos are competing for market space, that there's overlap. Right? Chain link, band protocol, it gets confusing, doesn't it? Which oracle is the right oracle? Which stable coin is the right stable coin? Then I believe you want to consider, at least as part of your portfolio, having Galaxy Digital. Right? They'll handle the custody. Let me just say, I believe they're underpriced. What I want you to do 
is to compare the market cap of Galaxy Digital with just the value of its Bitcoin holdings, right? Galaxy Digital right now, market cap wise, and double check everything I say, is about $2.5 billion. Not that much. Not that much at all. But yet they own over $200 million worth of Bitcoin. Just Bitcoin alone. They own other digital assets. My point to you is, because of crypto winter, which wasn't that long ago, because of a lot of unawareness about how popular crypto is in some circles, the fact that Stanley Druckenmiller, the fact that Bill Miller, the fact that some big names are now looking at digital assets. Paul Tudor Jones, Raul Paul, right? And many people, lay people, don't really know who these people are. Don't understand that some of the biggest names in investing over the last three decades are now looking closely at cryptocurrency. Howard Marks now is reevaluating his view of Bitcoin. Right? I believe you're getting Galaxy Digital, a group that is at ground zero for Bitcoin. These guys have been in the space for a long time. These guys are knowledgeable. These guys are diversified, mining, DeFi, Bitcoin ownership, partnership with Morgan Stanley for institutional clients. And you're getting them at a market cap of under $3 billion. You have got to be kidding me. So, don't get me wrong. I own some of the cryptocurrencies I've named. Right? I have custody of them myself. I'm responsible for them. But I'm also interested in having, as part of my investment strategy, some ownership of Galaxy Digital. Right? Full disclosure, I own some Galaxy Digital. Don't get me wrong, I'm not here saying I own a lot of it. No, look, I'm, I'm building like everyone else here. I'm just a retail investor trying to build financial security and freedom for my family. Right? I have some crypto with BlockFi. Right? They pay a nice percentage. I believe viewers here on YouTube need to consider those possibilities. Again, the website is galaxydigital.io. The head honcho there is Mike Novogratz. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.